why Michael Spinks doesn't want to leave his changing room to fight Mike Tyson. On June 27, 1988, Mike Tyson faced Michael Spinks in the highly anticipated fight for the World Heavyweight Championship. Tyson hit a 34-0 record with 30 KOs going into the fight and holds the WBA, WBC, and IBF heavyweight crowns. Spinks, who spent most of his career in the light heavyweight division, is also unbeaten with a 31-0 record, 21 wins by knockout. The fight was billed as a once-and-for-all fight to determine the real world heavyweight champion because Spinks holds the ring title and is considered a linear heavyweight champion, given how he never lost the IBF title, which Tyson later won. At the time, it was the richest fight in boxing history and fans were hoping to see a great fight, with several experts and former boxers, including Muhammad Ali, truly believing that Spinks could beat Tyson. But apparently, Michael Spinks himself didn't even believe he could beat Mike Tyson, didn't even want to get out of the locker room before the fight. Mike Tyson rose through the heavyweight rankings quickly, crushing opponents en route to a 27-0 record, 26 coming by knockout, many of them ruthless, before defeating Trevor Burbick for the WBC heavyweight title aged 20 on November 22, 1986. Just months later, he clinched a landslide victory over James Smith to win the WBA crown. Michael Spinks was a gold medalist in the middleweight division at the 1976 Summer Olympics and turned pro in 1977. He won the WBA light heavyweight title in 1981 and enjoyed four years at the top of the division before moving to the heavyweight division in 1985, beating Larry Holmes for the ring and IBF titles, as well as the lineal heavyweight crown. After defeating Holmes in a rematch and defeating Stefan Tankstad in 1986, Spinks was stripped of the IBF title for refusing to fight the number one challenger, Tony Tucker, who was awarded the title. Spinks wanted a bigger fee to fight Jerry Cooney and beat him on June 15, 1987, his last fight before Tyson's fight more than a year later. Tyson defended his WBA and WBC crowns against Pinklon Thomas in 1987, knocked him out in the sixth round, and went on to win the IBF title from Tucker to become the undisputed champion. After defeating Tyrell Biggs, Larry Holmes, and Tony Tubbs, the battle with Spinks began. Spinks didn't want to leave the dressing room and his manager didn't help. Michael Spinks came in as 4-1 to one underdogs, the best chance you could have in a fight with Mike Tyson at the time. Spinks manager Butch Lewis believes in his fighter but is still looking for a psychological edge in Iron Mike. He sent his assistant to Tyson's dressing room and was told there was a lump on Tyson's left glove, which turned out to be nothing. Lewis became adamant that Tyson's hands would be rewrapped, causing a ruckus in the process and even refusing to let the fight happen until things were settled. It was only after Spinks coach, Eddie Futch, got involved that things calmed down. Futch said the gloves were fine but the damage had been done. Tyson is hot on the subject and has told his own coach, Kevin Rooney, that he will hurt Michael Spinks. It's easy to take over $13 million against Mike Tyson but it's a little harder when reality hits and you have to go out and actually fight a 22-year-old wrecking ball, especially one your own people just got mad at. So when it came time to fight, as recounted in John and Wheezy Shapiro's book One Hit from the Promised Land, a story about the Spinks brothers, Michael Spinks didn't even want to leave the dressing room because he was so afraid of what could happen. Tyson did to him. Emmanuel Stewart had flown to Atlantic City to see the fight and went to check on Michael, Spinks. I went to the locker room, they couldn't even get him out, he was so scared. He was so nervous, really panicked. Michael lacked the personality to come out. It wasn't until 11.20 a.m. did Michael finally reach the ring, snaking his way through a celebrity-filled audience that included Norman Mailer, Jack Nicholson, Warren Beatty, Sean Penn, Madonna and, of course, Donald Trump. The fighter waved hesitantly at the crowd, acknowledging his family and friends. He entered the ring in a sparkling white robe as Kenny Loggins and Michael McDonald sang This Is It over the speakers. Sweat dripped down his cheeks and forehead. He looks like a bunny I just saw a hunting rifle. It didn't take long for Michael Spinks' worst fears to come true. Tyson won in 91 seconds and Spinks never fought again. Michael Spinks visibly terrified standing opposite Mike Tyson. Tyson had a look in his eyes that he was ready to kill someone and the fight was over before it started. When the opening bell rang, all of Spinks' plans to keep Tyson away from him vanished. As Tyson swarms, Spinks tries to tie him up and eats his forearm to solve the problem. After a quick warning from the referee, Tyson returned to work, cutting off any escape routes Spinks tried to find and trapping him in the ropes. Tyson hit a left uppercut, followed by a body punch and Spinks hit the canvas for the first time in his professional career. After a standing eight, Tyson returned with a quick 1-2 combo that ended with one of the biggest right-handers of his career and Spinks finished. 
His arms were flailing as he headed towards the ground, landing on his back on the canvas as Iron Mike stood over him and stared. After a count of 10, Spinks almost fell out of the ring, only 91 seconds.